she made up her own story, I had to write her story and read her words. And eventually, she, she came up to me at a great level. I read to her another book by an author, Mary Malone, earlier last year. It's called The 68 Rooms. If any of you have been to the Chicago Art Institute, it's about the Thorn Miniature Rooms. She, that caught her imagination. And so she made herself her own little miniature. And we talked about that if you have fancy materials, and I want to thank Trish, like, she helped with that project too. And she just made a little picture of the shoebox. But it was just so rewarding to see her imagination get caught and come alive. And this is the experience that some of you might be able to have, and I'm sure that other of you who have been mentored with that can have with a child. And I'll end by saying that when we, this is from testimony I submitted last year for the Raise of the Floor Bill, but I think it applies here. When we began this program, Kids Hope for Our Church, even we mentors were a bit dubious. Could one adult spending one hour and one child per week just during the school year really make that much difference? But over the years, according to the teachers of the children we've all mentored, that seemingly small amount of time spent with each child has led to changes in attitude, to improve reading and math skills and understanding, and most importantly, to the children staying in school. And perhaps for the children, it has to do with knowing an adult who makes a commitment and a promise to them, an adult who then keeps that commitment and that promise to show up for them one hour per week.
for the more people we have, the shorter the time frame that we'll get it done in. Okay? Um, thanks for everybody that throughout the summer gave things for the hygiene kits to go into disaster victims. We now have enough that hopefully we will be able to put together 50 kits. And on October 2nd, after church, we're going to try and meet down in Barker Hall. So everyone come down. You can just make one kit. It'll take you like five to ten minutes, and you're done. And then we'll get the 50 put together if everybody comes and does one. Okay? So that's with all the donations you get. Then also on October 2nd, you need to bring your checkbooks and your pocket change because that morning is when we'll start the sales for the gloves for the Thanksgiving in the park, which will take place on November 6th. But as you know, we've done this for a number of years. We've actually got this year, I think Lafayette and Niwa are going to join us with helping with donation items. But we buy gloves like in Costco. You rebuy them to give to a homeless or a person in need that we go to the Van Shell Park in Boulder on November 6th and deliver them and distribute them. So that will start October 2nd. There are $20 there that provides gloves and hopefully socks. Okay? And we're trying to get like 70 pairs, so we need a lot of people. Um, also, the pocket change, that's for the jars that you probably signed in this morning. Those people that are walking for crosswalk for food need throughout the world, those people have jars out there. We can call it a little mini competition, or you can put the same amount in each jar if you want to be fair. I don't care, just give a lot of money to the jars, okay? And that will support crosswalk.
invite all of our kids to come on over here with me. You see Jackie's still back there getting her, um, getting her probe off from Accolade. We'll see if you want to come up. Okay. Well, while we're waiting for Jackie, I want to show you guys something. I'm very excited about this. Look what I found outside in the front yard. Isn't it the coolest branch you've ever seen? Right? You know, I think it came off that really big tree that we have in front of the church. And I have always loved that tree. So I was really excited to see this big. So I'm going to take it home and I'm going to bury it in my backyard and I'm going to grow a tree just like that one. You all look really confused. Is that, that's not going to happen? But what if I put it in the dirt and give it some water and some sun? No? It, it might. I'm hoping for it already. But Julie was down there not like, looking at me like I'm crazy now. Is that not how it works? Okay, how do you grow a tree? Oh, you need a seed to start with. And this thing is certainly not a seed, is it? So if I got a seed, would it grow that big tree? So if I grow, if I put a seed in the ground, what grows? The tree. And then what, where does this come into play? It comes off the branches. Okay, thanks, Julia, for clarifying this for me. I was a little confused, I think. So I need a tree that grows big and tall first, and then it will grow this stick. Okay, thanks, Julia, for helping me figure that out. Um, you know, that kind of reminds me of our scripture today. When Jesus was talking about trees and branches and stuff. Jesus said that you do you need a tree trunk. You need a seed that grows into a great big tree, and the branches go off that tree. Without the tree, this branch can't get water, it can't get food or nutrients from the ground, right? That's how it works. Well, Jesus was telling us this story because he wanted to remind us that he's like that tree. And if we stay connected to Jesus, we're like these branches. We can grow big and strong because Jesus will give us all that awesome love from God and all the teachings on how to be awesome people, right? will be big, strong branches. But even better than that, when we get to be big, strong branches, we get to maybe we grow things like fruit or like flowers that we can share with others, right? When we grow strong in God's love, we can take that up and go share it with other people. Pretty cool, huh? And all because we are connected to Jesus. Pretty cool stuff, huh? And we have new shoes. That's super important. <laughs> Just like a new tree. Should we say a prayer, friends? Hey, God, thank you for Jesus, who invites us to connect with him and receive your love to share it with others. We love you, God. Thanks for loving us. Amen. Let's go to Sunday school.
We thank you, Lord, for the gifts that you place in our lives. We ask that you bless them. It's not for the work that they do, but also for those who of us who give. Amen. Before Jean starts the music offering, I notice that she's wearing her stolen and asked me to, and I forgot. I apologize. And some of you may not know, but not only is Jean an amazing organist, and we are glad to have you here today. She's also an ordained Methodist clergy person, so she wears many hats as well. So thank you, Jean. I know that we will love that. I also forgot, because anything that's new and not on my paper. If you haven't had a chance yet to register your attendance, I want to make sure that that goes around. And I don't want to interrupt Jean's music, so you can do drinks for me. <laughs>
we could get to know each other, don't forget your sign for my book, so that we can know who each other are, understand those gifts, and together share that with the world. You'll notice that the forest has grown closer to me. You never know where the trees might go. The trees remind us of that growth and that time together, and how together we grow. It's really sad when we have an apple tree, I don't know what's really ours, but it's over the park station. It keeps bearing wonderful apples until last year because another tree, another apple tree down a little bit died. And so there was nothing to pollinate our tree. But then this year it came back, so that was good. Somewhere new there's a tree. Trees need each other. We all need each other. And the scripture is to remind us that not only do we need each other, but we need Jesus. One of the things that I was excited about preaching on this text was Kevin and I were going to go to Italy when I was on leave, and I was so excited to take great pictures of really old vines to show you, because I thought, how cool that would be, right? If nothing else, just do a little travel walk and say, when we were in Italy, we didn't get to go to Italy because we got COVID instead. We were fine, we weren't very ill, but we didn't think we should travel. We didn't want to infect other people. We were very careful about that. We didn't want to be very sick in Italy. So I didn't get to go there and take these amazing pictures to show you all these vines growing, how they're pruned and old growth and all of that. But because we weren't very sick and we got better fairly quickly, we loaded up the camper and we went to Grand Junction, Colorado, which is almost like Italy. <laughs> <laughs> Although I had been practicing my Italian and they did not want to speak Italian to you in Grand Junction. But one day, we went to a vineyard there called Colterra. This is what it looked like. Colterra has the oldest vines in the state of Colorado. The oldest vines in the state of Colorado, which is pretty cool. Nothing like vines in Italy, though, but still a beautiful, beautiful place if you ever get a chance to go there. And you can see where they cut them, the pruning process. Out in the back, I didn't take a picture because it wasn't beautiful. There was piles of dead vines and leaves and things, I think that they're getting ready to be burned, just like you read for us. And the process is fascinating to sit and to look at the vines and think about the scripture, to think about being pruned. I don't like that part so much. I like the part of growing together, but being pruned, and not just pruned, but thrown in the fire. I don't know about all of you, but I don't want to get pruned and thrown in the fire for my faith. I understand how wonderful it is to hear those things and, and to say, but no, I like my faith to be easy. Maybe some of you don't, but I am not martyr for the cause. I understand why, maybe I should be, but I'm not. I'm just not. And, and so when I think about vines and all of that that Elizabeth read for me, I don't know. I just don't know if I want that for myself. But then, I started thinking more and more about the time in which Jesus was speaking. I started thinking about Jesus has a lot of agrarian examples. Why? Because that's what people in the time knew. Because Jesus wanted to tell people stories that they could understand based on their knowledge. I'm worse at physics than I am farming, but it's a close second. But one of the things that I remember as a child is helping my mother deadhead. That doesn't hurt the plants when we dead and that, that's taking off the blooms that are already impaired, you know, they're all dried up. It helps to bring more flowers. That's about the extent of my farming knowledge, but it's important to know these things and to know that when you do that, it grows better. Have you ever had a bush in your yard that you chopped way down because it just didn't look healthy anymore? What happens that next spring? It takes off, it grows, it's huge. And that's good news. That's good news. So maybe the pruning part of the story isn't so bad. We all start starting to learn that it's good to compost around or put dead branches around for the winter to help things winter over. And you have to prune them back to do that, to protect those tender plants. And as I start to think about my faith that those bushes that go crazy when they're pruned, maybe it's okay. Will pruning hurt? I don't know if it hurts a plant to prune it or not. I'm looking at some of my gardeners in the room. None of them have hurt. 
he didn't cry out, so I think we're good. It's a good thing, right? Prayers. So maybe when we're pruned back, it's okay. Maybe when those things that aren't healthy and alive in our lives anymore, maybe that's okay. What are those things for you? If you don't have to shout them out. What are those dead vines in your life? What are those things that aren't bearing fruit for you? What are the things that you do over and over that you realize aren't good? Because nothing good is happening. Things that aren't growing or filling you up. Things that aren't helping you grow things. Can you think about them and then think about those pretty tears? And if those things were gone, would you be able to grow in other places and ways? With the spring of your faith, bring that crazy giant bush that we see. Would it help? What would that look like in your life? Those things that are no longer fruitful or useful. Do you have them? Do you know what they are? One of the things I thought about is I thought about grapes and vineyards and the fruit of the vine, how much that makes sense to me. The idea of bringing them back to grow better. I realized that we don't see a lot of vineyards. You can go look at them, you can see them, but they're not here around us everywhere. But trees are. Like Lewis's branch. Our children are smart, aren't they? They knew that that wasn't going to work. Have you ever tried to start something in that starter soil? It's hard. And that branch, I don't think, had much life left. But trees, have you seen a tree lately? No, seriously, have you seen any trees around? Yeah. yeah, we see them all the time, don't we? We are blessed to live in a place that there are lots of beautiful and amazing trees. And I started thinking about branches, and would Jesus be okay if we talked about trees instead? And I think yes, because we know about trees and we see them. And so I wanted to share with you some pictures of trees. Here's my first tree for a giant sequoia. Have any of you been to see them? This is on my bucket list. I've never been there. I've never been there. I think it would be good for me to go and see them. These are among the most, the tallest trees in the world, among the biggest trees. People did awful things to them. You've seen pictures like in the 1920s of tunnels cut through them. And they're starting to suffer from them. They're also starting to suffer from things like greenhouse emissions, not good for the trees. The lack of environment for them, they've been sh they've shrunk down. I should have had other people help me with this, but there's not as many spaces for them. These magnificent trees are something that we all recognize and see. And they didn't grow this big quickly. And so I think if we're going to talk about things growing and branches, we need to realize this tree was a planet yesterday. This tree wasn't planted, it was naturally growing there. I think about the trees that are planted on the yard, they're not quite this big. They're about this big around. Because that's what you plant. And isn't it amazing to think? And they won't be this big, but they'll get big. They're an oak, a burr oak, is that right? It's a burr oak, three of them out there, you can see them here in a little bit. And they will get big. Those are big trees. None of us will see them that large. Oh, maybe some of our youth that are in the room might see them get big, or, but they're not a fast growth tree, but they're amazing trees. Why do we plant a tree we'll never see grow that big? Because we believe that those trees have a future, not just as a tree, but for what they'll do for the air, for all the amazing things trees do. Do you think that Jesus ever looks at us and says, oh, I don't know about that one? That, look, that spin little faith thing right there. Not much faith in that tree. No. We had time to grow. Maybe not for today, but we will grow. Another kind of fascinating tree that you've all seen lots of these. Let's see the next one. Uh, it's kind of hard to see, but that's an aspen grove. Can you see the aspen? How many of you have seen the aspens? Yeah. That's a huge aspen grove. This is the largest grove of aspens anywhere in the world, and that is in Utah. The second largest is in Colorado. 
the um, thought may be that the one in Colorado has surpassed the one in Utah, but I'm not going to have, I read the debate back. These trees, this is one, one organism. Do you see that? One. It looks like hundreds and hundreds of trees, many, many acres, but it's one. One tree, one organism. The largest living organism in the world, right there. Oh, right there in Utah. Amazing, isn't it? Because that's how they grow. Have any of you ever had decorative aspens in your yard? Yes. Cut the grass, it's full. The yard is full of them because those are all one tree. It's not from seedlings, it's not, it's one organism. Each looking individual, but one. Isn't that amazing? amazing to think about. Ours aren't quite turned yet, but they will be there. If you go to the leaf feed, you know many of us do go and look at the leaves. Don't go on a Saturday, but go up and look. And when you do, will you say to yourself, wow, that's not five trees in this stand, that's one. That's not a hundred trees, it's one. One living organism. And I don't think if Jesus had ever been here and seen the aspens, he would have told us a story of that. He would have said how important it is Connection. We may all look individual, but we're connected. And the scripture says, what are we connected to? To God. Because God is the one that brings us together. What a beautiful image for us. As people who live and see that all the time, we remember and know. How are you connected one to the other? How are we as a church organism connected one to the other? And how can we continue to grow?
You have to risk something. That's okay. That's okay. To have those feelings sometimes. Does it mean we're people of bad faith? No. It just means we're human people. And maybe some of that pruning that the scripture talks about is to help us move from those times. To help us continue to seek the water of faith. The things that we need to continue to grow. Trees are amazing, aren't they? Trees are amazing. Uh, some of you have lived in the Boulder area for a long time and know what it means to be a tree hugger. No, no one's ever heard that? Yes, you have. Uh, some of you are tree huggers. But I think that when we think about these other, these trees and the stories that Jesus tells, that maybe we should realize that not only are we tree huggers, or are supposed to be tree huggers, but if we are those trees, who hugs us? We are hugged and we are loved. That's pretty exciting stuff. And sometimes one of us is one kind of tree and the others or another kind, but we come together to create this beautiful world, to create all that we see around us. When you think of this scripture, you might think of vines, you might think of trees, but I want you to consider it. To be open to being pruned a little, because you'll flourish to be open to saying, how can we grow together? Let's think about those ways together. Next week we'll start a series talking about Jesus. But let's think together. If you have ideas, let me know. If you have things you'd like to see, let's figure out how we can make that happen. If you look around and you say, you know, maybe we need to get rid of X, Y, or Z. It needs to be pruned off. Let's talk about that too. Bill Gibbs, the chair of the board, he'd love to hear your ideas. Oh, I think he would. He would. I don't know. Bill, share your ideas with each other. Let's do what we can to create an environment that nurtures and helps us all to grow together. Amen.
helping others to know, and understanding that even sometimes when we don't have faith, God is 